Hello my friends, David Kessler here and welcome back to the studio. Today we want to talk about primary colors. Now this is something we probably learned about in elementary school. But how many times do we actually think about primary colors and their basic attributes when, we, when we're going to do a painting? Right? What we try to teach in the workshops is about warm primaries and cool primaries. Each primary color, red, blue, and yellow, has a warm version and a cool version. And I would even go so far as to say they have a neutral version or a version that's closer to primary blue, primary yellow, and primary red. As a matter of fact, some manufacturers even have a primary blue, red, and yellow. Okay, now I don't particularly use those colors, but I have some substitutes here and we can start to look at which colors seem to be warm and which are cool with regard to the three primaries. All right, now I've got a column here for warm colors, one for neutral, so this is really kind of the primary colors, and one for cool, right? So each version has a warm, a neutral, and a cool of the three primaries, each one, all right? So these, these are the particular ones that I use. You may use different colors, but these are the ones that I use that are warm, neutral, and cool. All right for the warm, you, know, you can see how warm this has got a lot of red in it. So warm yellow has red added to it to take it closer to orange than a cool yellow. Okay. The, the neutral, this would be called primary yellow, and a lot of manufacturers make a pure primary yellow. Uh, this for me is Hansa Deep. Right? I use Indian yellow here. You may use you know, CAD, um, CAD yellow uh, deep or something like that. Right? I use Indian yellow. Got more orange in it than CAD typically does. Then here I have Hansa Deep, which is, a more, which is closer to a primary yellow. Then here is the cool version of Hansa Light, which has a lot of green in it. So you can see the variation from warm to neutral to cool, right, from red to more neutral to green as we move warm to cool, right? Now with red, you know, a lot of people get confused with the reds and the blues, right, but, but cadmium red medium is a warm red, but it has a lot of orange in it that takes it from primary, makes it warmer, right, the orange warms it up, now to cool it down, we added blue to it, right? So you go from primary, which is more neutral, to a cooler, which adds blue, right? And I personally use quinacridone magenta for that. This is cad deep, cadmium red deep. This is cadmium red medium, right? And I, and I typically don't use these a whole lot, except in mixtures. I don't use them by themselves, but I use mostly the cool red it tends to be my favorite. I can add a little bit of yellow to it or a little bit of uh, orange to it and warm it up so that it looks like this. So when I'm traveling, it's easier for me just to take one red than it is to take three reds with me. Now let's look at the blues. Right there again, warm to cool. I, I use an ultramarine blue, which is the main warm blue. There may be some, you know, for me, this is really the only warm blue. There's some others that people tend to call warm, which have a darker value and a little bit strange, but every manufacturer makes ultramarine blue, right? So it's, it's the one really true uh, uh, warm blue because it has red mixed in it, okay? Now for a neutral blue or a primary blue, I use cobalt blue because it's really neither warm nor cool. For a cool blue, and there are many cool blues, I pick cerulean blue. There's also thalo blue and Prussian blue and manganese blue, and you can name a whole list of cool blues. But personally for me, you know, I prefer uh, cerulean blue. And it has green in it. So when you're thinking about primary colors, remember, with the blues, and, and so many people, so many of my students get mixed up with the blue. They don't know that ultramarines is red. They don't know that uh, cerulean blue or Prussian blue or thalo blue has green in it uh, because they haven't spent enough time just studying warms and cools. But each one of those, each one of these, 
uh, has its own unique properties and can be used in a special way in a painting. Uh, cerulean blue is going to be very different than ultramarine blue if you're trying to make violet. Same way with the reds, right? You can only make really a good violet with the, with the cool red and not with the warm red. Uh, and if you try to mix these three with the three blues to make greens, then each one of these and each one of these, each mixture is going to be completely different from the one before it, right? So the only way you're going to learn how to make secondary colors from the primaries is to get in there and start mixing them and see which ones make what colors. You know, just do a color chart. That's what I do. That's what I did when I started learning about color. It's just, you know, mix this one with this one and see what kind of green you get. Then mix this one with this one, this one with that one, and just make a color chart. Add a little white to it, right, to see what happens to it. See how it changes the value. See how it changes the color. That's how you learn it, right? That's how you learn it. So if you're interested in learning more about color, color theory, how to use the color, actually how to take this, use it in a painting, then feel free to come to one of my workshops. I'll put a link below to my website, davidmkessler.com. You can find a list of workshops there, and we'd love to have you at one. I'd like to meet you in person and have a chance to paint with you. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet subscribed, click the red subscribe button. And I hope this video was helpful for you, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.